Hi, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be talking about buffer tanks and the whole idea of putting a bit ton of water between your heat pump and your radiators and underfloor heating. But I do want to preempt this conversation by saying that a buffer tank is not inherently bad. It's a perfectly sensible tool with a perfectly sensible job. But in the UK, it's been turned into a plaster for poor heat pump installations. And because of that, thousands of heat pumps never reach their full potential. So let's talk about why. A buffer tank at its simplest is just a mild or stainless steel cylinder. It sits between the heat pump and the heating system and it has multiple ports and ranges in size from 40 to 100 litres in most domestic settings. Just for clarity, there are also low loss headers that work in the same way as buffers and they're just smaller and tidier but do the same hydraulic separation. And when I say hydraulic separation, I simply mean this. The heat pump and your radiators are no longer part of the same water circuit. They're split, decoupled, hydraulically separated. And if you want to dig deeper into how this plays out in real systems, we've got loads of threads explaining this on the Renewable Heating Hub forums. And then sitting apart from buffers and no loss headers is the volumizer. Two ports in line, no fancy decoupling, no mixing, just a big ton of water that adds volume to your system if needed. So why can buffer tanks be problematic when it comes to heat pumps? Well, a heat pump thrives on tight control, low temperatures, a delta T around 5 degrees, long, gentle, continuous operation. What it absolutely does not want in most installs is someone wedging a big tank in the middle that starts blending the flow like a smoothie maker. And yet in the UK, that's exactly what happens. An installer can't get enough flow through old undersized pipework? Stick in a buffer. They didn't size the radiators correctly? Stick in a buffer. The system has multiple zones that keep shutting down? You've guessed it. Stick in a buffer. It's become the industry's crunch and it makes the heat pump look happy on install day, but the homeowner pays the bill forever. So the issue with buffer tanks is something called distortion, which is essentially water mixing in the tank. When you separate the system with a buffer, you create two independent water circuits, the heat pump side and the radiator side, and their flow rates will almost never match. Water always takes the path of least resistance. The result inside the tank is distortion, swirling and mixing, hotter and cooler water blending together. This means the water leaving the tank for your radiators is cooler than it should be. So the heat pump has to work harder, ramping up to compensate, and your electricity bills start to climb. And with no controller that measures and balances both sides in real time, you have no control over the blending that is actually taking place inside that buffer tank. So in practical terms, let's talk about what that does to radiators. Imagine your heat pump running at a 45 degree flow temperature with a delta T of 5 degrees. You've sized your radiators for a mean water temperature of 42.5 degrees. That's perfect. Now slot in a poorly balanced buffer tank. The secondary flow rate drops, mixing kicks in, and suddenly your mean water temperature is down at 35 degrees, for example. That's a 7.5 degree drop, and now those correctly sized radiators need to be about 80% bigger to achieve the same heat output. So now to achieve your target temperatures, you need to crank up the flow temperature. And for every degree that you increase your flow temperature, it increases your running costs. And just like that, a big chunk of your potential heat pump performance gains have quietly disappeared. Perhaps as much as 20 to 25% have gone, just because the system is compensating for a tank that shouldn't be there. And we've had scores of homeowners on the forums discover exactly this, massive performance hits caused purely by a buffer tank. Now you might be thinking, if it's so obviously problematic, why do installers keep doing it? The simple answer is it hides bad design and it reduces callbacks. But the homeowner pays the price every single day that the system runs, and the worst bit is that the heat pump never knows that there's a problem. It only sees the flow and return to the buffer, not to the actual radiators. So the system looks happy. And to show how this plays out, here's a real story. A homeowner called Simon emailed me earlier this year. He had a heat pump designed for 45 degree flow temperature, 5 degree delta T, textbook numbers, except the installer couldn't get enough flow through his secondary circuit. So they fitted a buffer tank to keep the heat pump happy. What actually happened afterwards was predictable. Simon's radiated mean water temperature dropped by 7.5 degrees. To reach the same room temperatures, he now either needed larger radiators, almost double in size, or he had to crank up the heat pump by exactly the 7.5 degrees that he was losing. And when he did that, his heat pump running costs jumped up massively. On day one, everything had looked fine. The heat pump hummed away, the installer left smiling, but when the first cold snap hit, the living room refused to warm up, and the smart meter did the opposite. That's the cost of using a buffer as camouflage. Now before we paint all tanks as wicked, let's talk about volumizers, because volumizers are the good ones when it comes to heat pumps. They don't separate anything, they don't mix anything, they just add water volume. The heat pump still sees the real flow and the real return. So if you need more system volume, 
user volumizer. But I still regularly do get asked by homeowners, when do you actually need a buffer tank? As far as I'm concerned, in a typical UK home, almost never. And that's because modern heat pumps can handle minimum flow rates far better than earlier models. Get the heat loss right, size the emitters properly, design the pipe work, and use a volumizer if your system does require more system volume. Because the truth is actually quite simple. Heating is just energy that's transported by water. If that water can't move at the right rate or at the right temperature, you'll pay for it forever. So buffer tanks aren't evil. They're just typically in the wrong homes, doing the wrong job for the wrong reasons. And if you're sitting at home right now thinking, hang on, I've got one of those. Don't panic. You're not stuck with it. It's not a fatal design flaw. It's just plumbing and it can be changed. If you've determined that your buffer tank is causing mixing that's leading to efficiency issues, you can bypass it entirely by literally piping around it. A competent installer or plumber can probably get it done for you in an afternoon, and the heat pump goes back to seeing the real system again, flow rates return to normal, temperatures behave, and the efficiency tends to jump back up. Or as an alternative, since you already have the cylinder sitting there that you have paid for, you can just get it replumbed as a volumizer. Two pipes instead of four, no separation, no blending, no weird control logic. Just extra water volume doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And if you're still not sure what's best for your system, our forums are full of homeowners who have done this. Because it always comes back to the same thing. Good flow, good emitters, and a heat pump that's connected directly to your system that is meant to be heating. Get that right, and the ghosts in your buffer tank disappear. Thanks for watching, and next time someone tells you to just stick in a buffer, you'll know exactly where to suggest they stick it instead. And if you want more detailed diagrams or help figuring out whether your system is being held back by a buffer tank, Come join the discussion on the Renewable Heating Hub forums.